Um, so the other way, I well, the other way, what I do do, like for example, when I worked on this project, I had BFD2 programmed up, tidied up all my MIDI parts. You can see we changed the arrangements. So I chopped about a few bits here and looped and repeated a few bits and whatever. So you got that anything right. Uh, now I need to send the raw, as it was raw files, the equivalent of me sitting there playing, um, over to Eddie. So you go into your mixer here, you can see everything goes out on a master bus at the moment. The master bus being the master out, stereo out. But you can assign these channels to, within Logic, it's limited to 8 mono and 8 stereo. Um, but you can assign your bass drum to output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I can show you quickly. I'll just do a couple of them because obviously you don't want to sit and watch me go through all of them. So if I assign the bass drum to mono 1 and mono 2, and if we mute, um, mute everything else, so we just hear that. Oh. It's probably an easy way of doing this, but I'm. It's weird, BFD2 has so much to offer and yet I only use so little because I use the live side of it at the moment. I'm going to be um, hopefully working with FX so I will um, obviously start looking into all the other bits that you as drums might use like the loops, the libraries that come with it, the MIDI stuff, or you as guitarists will use so because um, hopefully we're going to be giving away some stuff. Uh, anyway, so I've sent the bass drum out on mono 1. Uh, you have to make sure the plugin is set to FX BFD2 multi out, which it is. Here, hit your little plus sign. Create your aux channels, and it'll go up to 16 or 15 because you've got one already. So, we can look at aux one here. Let's set this one to our bass drum. So, you go, um, uh, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? do, 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 do? I'm lost, I've forgotten. Uh, what did we send it to? Mono one. That's it. Right. So this is BFT two instrument BFT two. Oh, there's stereo track. Sorry, I have to go to the first mono track. Just here. Instrument seventeen solo. So you go. There's a kick out coming out. Go straight out of BFD2 into the AUX channel, which of course you can't record. So now you send your AUX channel out to a bus. So we go for bus one, create an audio channel. I think you guys are probably there already. Input from bus one, record enable, it's a mono track, output's going to stereo, and, uh, out, and of course you could create a um, the stem for all this kind of stuff, so you can just have your bus mix. Send that out. Now, we have to make sure that we, that's going to bus one. Um, we want BFD2, no output there. And, let's have a look. We want to make sure that our bus goes to the stereo. Let's go to bus one. Plus one in, job done. Now we can record our kick drum, for example. Which is pretty cool. Um, and of course, once you've got these WAV files, WAV files, AIFF files, whatever you want to use, um, and you're happy with your edit within BFD2, export it all like that, close BFD2, and you've got stacks and RAF stacks of plugins. It's all Christy. Uh, obviously with the 16, uh, 64 bit around the corner, once the LAM, RAM limitations have, uh, have gone, the 14 gig of RAM in my machine, and it won't be long for, you know, you guys have all probably got machines with 4 gig plus in them. Um, you know, you'll be able to load whole sample libraries into RAM, which would be great, especially being a V-Drum player, because that's going to be so quick. Because um, at the moment, the other only options are from companies like Apogee, or Apogee rather, Apogee, yeah, um, 
who have got a system where you can link multiple machines um, so you could run your plugins on a separate machine and it comes in via a bus on a PCIe card into logic as separate inputs again um, but it's absolutely spot on it's just you wouldn't know um, and of course because you're running into audio into logic you've got all that RAM free it's great stuff very expensive um, so yeah so there's a little overview of how I used BFD2 within uh, the single breath my funky drum parts Christy. and of course when you export the audio files and um, because uh, BFD2 has got its own preset mixer you want to make sure well, if you're mixing outside of BFD2 that when you export everything that it's all at 0 dB on the mixer and all your pans are set to 0 as well uh, center as well um, otherwise you get a sort of mix export which you might want or you might not uh, I personally don't want I want to I want it to be the equivalent of me recording drums and then me mixing drums. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions about BFD2 um, or what you see, drop us a line. Um, you know, I don't know the product inside out, I know it quite well in the way I use it, um, and I'm nothing but praise for it from that point of view. It, yeah, it's just wicked and if you're a guitarist at home and you've got songs that you want to uh, record and that kind of thing um, BFD2 for 200 and I think it's 220, 230 pounds probably get less than that now um, and with a little bit of patience because you can program you can write your own grooves in to the editor page as well so this is like a midi loop a section where you can drag loops in create your own grooves you can write them, draw them in there as well or you can draw them in in your MIDI section within your um, door. Um, you know, for that, the in a little few weeks just getting to grips with it, you've got all the tools you need to create great sounding drum tracks. Um, yeah, that's about it really. Boiler. Can't wait to get this moved out. So, um, yeah, there's a little sample video. Let me know what you think. If it sucks, tell me. If you like it, tell me. If you want to know more, tell me. Um, if you don't like the sound, tell me. If you don't like the way it's captured, tell me. Um, tell me if you like it, if you don't. And I'll, um, yeah, I'm going to try and do a few more of these. And I'll share what knowledge I do have of logic and all this kind of stuff with you guys. It's not a lot. You know, I'm totally self-taught. I've watched a few videos. I don't really read. So I try and get the grips of this all myself. And so, But I know how frustrating it is if you've gone out and bought a Mac and logic and you just sitting there and like it's like oh my god this is anything but logical to use because that's how I feel um give us a shout and see if I can help you. getting pestered right stick out see you later